The Ken Riley Show. A weekly look at Florida A&M Rattler football is brought to you by State Farm Insurance and the more than 900 State Farm agents in Florida who support Rattler football. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By the Florida Orange Grower. Florida Orange Juice. It makes you feel so good. By Gatorade. It's all you're thirsting for. And by Dairy Farmers Incorporated. Milk. It does a body good. Rattlers are set. Ezel sends Daniel in motion. Steps in the pocket. Fires across the middle for Daniel. He's got his man beat. Touchdown. And the Rattlers fall in Grambling. Hello and welcome to the Ken Riley Show. I'm Keith Miles along with the head Rattler coach, Ken Riley. And coach, after another great comeback in the last quarter, uh, just like the Rattlers did against Southern University, we fell to Grambling as they put together a, a strong drive to close out this ball game. Yeah, Keith, we uh, definitely had a good comeback. Uh, we had a chance to win it with four minutes left. We went up, uh, scored. They came back and drove, did what they had to do. We got one other opportunity and uh, we didn't get it done in those four plays and consequently won the ball game. But I thought that we, both teams, looked a little flat. I don't know what had happened. I thought that knowing going in, they were going to be a little flat because of the disappointing loss two weeks ago. But we played down to their level and we just didn't have the enthusiasm and made a lot of mistakes early in the game. It really cost the game. Yeah, talk about those mistakes early in the ball game. Certainly, we had some good drives going. We could have probably put this thing away early on, but uh, some fumbles hurt us uh, early on in the game. Well, we, the first drive, opening kickoff, we drove the ball down there, and I think we missed an easy field goal, and we had another opportunity, I think, to stop because of fumble. We threw an interception for a touchdown that uh, hurt us, and uh, we came back in spite of all those uh, turnovers, but still, we lost the football game because we didn't do what we had to do when we had the opportunity to do it. All right, Coach, we'll come back and take a look at the first half of FAMU versus Grambling out in Grambling, Louisiana. But first, this time out on the Ken Riley Show. All right, the Ken Riley Show is back. And, Coach, we were in Grambling, Louisiana, Eddie Robinson Stadium, the home of a living legend, uh, Coach Eddie Robinson. And certainly this was your first time to match wits with him, I guess, coach to coach. But uh, everybody knows uh, the great Eddie Robinson. Uh, it was a great experience, Keith. I've worked with Eddie, well, against Eddie only in an all-star situation the first time across in a, in a regular season game. And, uh, again, I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, talked with him briefly after the game and before the game. And uh, there was a lot of pressure on him down there. And he was uh, very happy to have won that ball game. I don't know if it's still going to make the difference. I see a lot of people right now think the game has passed him by. But he's done so much for football. And I have a, a lot of admiration and respect for him. Uh, his football team, I think, uh, still was a little bit flat, but uh, they played when they had to. And I just wish the only best for Coach Robson. I know football is his whole career. It's kind of hard to give up something that uh, you've been doing all your life. I can remember when I had to retire from football after 15 years, you started thinking, what am I going to do now? But at some point, we all have to give it up. I'm sure he'll make that decision at the right time. All right. Well, we were in Grambling, Louisiana, Eddie Robinson Stadium, a unique stadium built down in the hole, and uh, over 7,000 fans turned out to see the Rattlers and the Grambling State Tigers. And uh, here we go, Rattlers on offense, first drive. Here's Chuck Duffy. And Coach, this is a fine one. We got off to a great start. We got off to a great start, Keith. We did a lot of... Uh falling around this turf. It was kind of a loose turf because it was wet. It is in the hole. <laughs> I've never been in a, played in, in a stadium like that before, but it's a nice stadium. We made too many mistakes falling here and uh, fumbles here and there that really cost us during the game. We definitely uh, had more yardage and everything, but again, the turnovers kill us. Here's Tony back to pass. Sets up, fires across the middle, and a fine reception here to Tim Daniel. Tim Daniel had a big day, Coach. Another big day for Tim. He's a senior. This should have been a touchdown here. Keep wide open when it just rained. That should have been a touchdown. We ended up not getting anything out of this uh, because we missed the field goal. But that was definitely a touchdown there. When it lane just not going right for you that particular day, it's not going to happen. That should have either been uh, seven points on opening drive. You can see he was wide open. He slipped down. and. Uh, we missed the field goal, that easy field goal, so that really hurt us early. Yeah, there's Coach uh, Eddie Robinson on the sideline there. Rattlers come out with nothing on that first drive. Here we go later in the first quarter, and this is uh, Chuck Duffy with another fine run. You can see the Rattler offensive line doing a good job against Grambling's uh, big defensive line up front. You can see that uh, here's a fumble right here that hurt us, and uh, Chuck runs extremely well, has great moves. The turf's a little slippery there, but uh, he caught up the ball there, gave the opportunity to... Uh, get a field goal early. I think this kid kicked a 40 some yard field goal, which was, uh, I think, the longest of his career. This is a 
Butcher, the running back for Grambling. You can see, once again, the Rattler defense swarming to the football. This is a 47-yard field goal. Gilad Landau out of Israel, coach. Uh, and the Tigers take the lead, 3 to nothing. Now, back on offense is Grambling. Defense for the Rattlers. We're in the second quarter now. And here's a big reception from the quarterback, Bryant, to a fullback out of Lakeland, coach. Yeah. Lakeland, Florida. Gant. He's a great runner. That was a good tackle by Keno Taylor. Yeah, big Eric Gant. Keno's having a great season. Here we go on defense again. Here's the big fullback again out of Lakeland, uh, Gant. And once again, the Grambling Tigers. Now, this is uh, sort of their bread and butter play, Coach. The little uh, counter play with the uh, wing back. But uh, here we go. Back on offense, Grambling touchdown pass to uh, their tight end. And that makes it 10-0. Uh, makes it 10 nothing. 10 nothing. Makes it 10 nothing. And uh, again, we came back, and uh, I think we only got three points. And eventually, uh, later on in this third quarter, went up, in, went up in this ball game. But uh, we never did give up. And like I said, we just beat ourselves with mistakes and didn't get in the end zone. Well, he, Grambling had two kicks run back against them against Alabama State. They did not want David Lucas to handle that football, Coach. Well, you can see that all day long. They tried to scribble on the ball, I mean, on the ground, and uh, they went to the uh, to up, up linemen, uh, full banks, and they didn't want the ball in, in uh, David Lucas' hand. Another good throw here, a good catch. I think this is uh, Tim Daniels again. Tim Daniels again, and the Rattlers have a good drive going here. Here we go, fine run. This is Alonzo Ashwood, Coach, uh, fine back in his own right. And Ashwood takes us down to about the 12-yard line. Well, we fumble the ball here, and Tony does the next best thing. He picks it up and runs uh, for first down on this track. Good counseling from the head coach there. Alonzo Ashwood, a little power running, takes it down to the one-yard line. And now the Rattlers knocking at the door. Ashwood goes up and over and in for the score. And now the Rattlers are on the scoreboard to make it 10-7 as Tim Cameron boots the extra point and Coach, we're right back in this thing. That was a good drive, Keith. We got behind 10 uh, points, and the next drive we had the ball. We went right down and scored. Uh, Alonzo Ashwood came in and did some, uh, very good running for us. Uh, passing was good by Tony Ezell. They, they held our tight end all day on this thing, and we never did get the call. But this is good here by, uh, uh, I think that was Ashwood, Ashwood again. Yeah. But uh, yeah. this was an errant pass thrown by Tony uh, to the wide side. If it never should have been thrown, this hurt us all. So, uh, uh, just a mistake on that part, throwing the ball out in the flat with nothing on it. The guy intercepted and went for a touchdown. And so uh, Michael Ginyard goes 53 yards with the interception. And now we're coming right back. 16 to 7 is our score. Tony having a little problem planting, but he gets the pass away. A fine throw and catch to James Thurman, who makes a big reception and steps out of bounds. Brown has got a good drive going again. And here's another great catch. I think this is a great win here, Coach. Tight end. We went to our no-hull offense again, and again, our offense went right down the field and scored, uh, which put us back in the ball game. I think we got the score on this drive was 16-14. And Coach, we might need to go no-huddle for the rest of this season because we have had a lot of success with the no-huddle offense. We get a pass interference called here on the uh, on the play and gives us a first and goal to go inside the five with 43 seconds. And here's Alonzo Ashwood with another fine power run. Another fine run here, Keith, and again, we went right down the field and scored. You can see we moved the ball well. It's just that a uh, couple of times we had opportunities and didn't get, in, uh, didn't get into the end zone, uh, whether for dropping a pass, uh, uh, fumble, uh, or whatever, but uh, it, 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 we just didn't get it done. Jim makes it 16 to 14 with uh, 38 seconds left, and it's not over yet before the half, Coach Gramley going up top trying to get some more points on the board. And here's William Carroll, Coach, with his, uh, let's see, is it eighth, yeah, in, yeah. eighth interception of the season? William got hurt uh, later on. It could have been this play. He got hit on the sideline and was out for the rest of the game. But that, that was his eighth interception right now. I think he's either tied or uh, in second place now as far as uh, leaders in the 1AA in interceptions. All right, we're down 16 to 14 at the half, Coach, and certainly we could have been ahead had we gotten that extra, uh, that early field goal or had an opportunity to punch it in on that uh, for a touchdown. Uh, you had to feel good right now what the team had done. They came right. back and uh, only two points down. You can see that we had an opportunity there. With them. We had a touchdown to open drive and we missed, a, well, we missed that field goal, so we could have easily been up on this game. But we, were, we felt good at where we were at this particular time because of the mistakes that we made. And we went in halftime and said we had to go back and continue to move on offense and continue to play well on defense. And we did that in, in spots. And when we had an opportunity, our defense didn't come through for us, and consequently we lost. 
All right, well, Coach, we'll come back and take a look at the second half highlights, FAMU versus Grambling, after this time out on the Ken Riley Show. This is Ken. All right, interesting weekend out in Louisiana this past weekend. Of course, Coach, it was the, the big governor's race going on, and certainly we saw a lot of uh, signs for uh, Edwards, a lot of signs for Duke, and saw some crazy uh, political commercials on the TV out in, uh, in Grambling, Louisiana. A little bit different uh, than normal <laughs> as far as governor's race, but it was interesting, and uh, I, I, there's various reactions on this thing uh, from both sides, and uh, well, it's over with, and Edwards now is, is the new governor of Louisiana. All right, back to football. Second half action as the Grambling Tigers will get a big opening drive here in the third quarter, but the Rattlers coach will put up a great defensive stand. Our defense really came uh, through for us. They, they moved the ball well all second half, but here we had a great goal line stand and getting in the end zone, and, uh, but you can see they moved the ball uh, pretty handily here. Now, the Tigers will go four downs and will not get it in, and uh, the Rattler defense just really rose to the occasion. I think this is the fourth down play, and you can see great play. Now. Great play. Sean and Brantley Sean came Brantley barreling through. Great play by Sean Brantley. Uh, they were big up front with the offensive line. It was definitely hard to do anything up the middle, and I think it wore our defense uh, line down eventually in the fourth quarter because they, they moved the ball real well on this game. Uh, we're backed up, and uh, we get a good drive going out here. Jonathan Jones with a fine run. Then Tony comes out, Coach, with another fine run, and Tony has learned how to do that slide, and he's learned how to find that sideline. Well, Tony was sick in this game, too. Uh, had a, a lot of our people were weak from a virus that's going around, even our coaches, but uh, I thought he played well in spite of uh, the, the little sickness that he had. And later on in the game, we pinned Gramley back with a great punt, and now they're in their hole trying to get out of here, and... Uh, they give us good field position as they didn't get a good punt, and now we're back on offense. Tony directing traffic here and uh, goes down. Again, you can see the loose turf there. We had problems all day with Tony and some of our running backs because of that loose turf. All right, Coach, you got him in the huddle here for the fourth quarter. I guess you, those final words of encouragement uh, to go out and pull this thing out. It was kind of tough right there at uh, one point, but uh, we moved the ball down, Keith, and uh, we scored when we had to. This is a good job here by, uh, again, this is Chuck Duffy. Uh, can't keep his feet up on him here. This is Chuck Duffy again. Yeah. Duffy uh, wrapped up here. Good job by the Tiger defense. But Tony, uh, once again, oh, boy, that was, was a, a touchdown. That was a touchdown there, Coach. <laughs> but again, he was just running meant to be. Here we go. Tony fires in the end zone this time and overthrows uh, Tyrone Davis. And here's Tim with his second field goal attempt of the afternoon. This one was this blocked. This time is blocked. So you can see again, we had another touchdown. Uh, we had the ball turning up, ready to run. The ball slipped out of our hand. That's another seven points that uh, went through our fingers. And boy, like we snaked it again. To keep that just <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. Boy, that, it's, just, it's frustrating when that happens to you, but that's football. Yeah, here we go. Uh, late now in the ball game, Grambling on offense. Uh, Eric Bryant, the young sophomore quarterback and he connects with their big tight end and they've got a drive going. Grambling inside Rattler territory and here again is uh, I think this is Nate Singleton coach their fine wing back. He's a senior and uh, you said he reminded you a lot of old Sammy White who used to play with Grambling. He's a great football player. A good tackle by Kennedy. Uh, yeah. the secondary had to come up and make a lot of tackles there and uh, yep. they might be a little sore today but they did a good job coming up all day. Yeah. Here we go again, and uh, we're out of defense, rises to the occasion once again. We bent, but we didn't break. Great and defense. You can see, stop the big fullback here. And uh, once again, Another the great tackle here. Uh, they didn't get into the end zone. In this they did not get time. into the end zone. But the field goal kicker came through again. Yeah. Landau with a 22-yard field goal, and that makes it 19-14 Grambling. And it's not over yet. The Rattlers are coming back. Here's Tony Ezel back to pass. Fires across the middle. And, uh, boy, this is a great, great play. Catch. This is Terry Mickens. Terry Mickens. And look at this fine run. Terry gives us ex excellent field position. And the Rattlers show some character on this drive. Coach. Well, again, Keith, I, I have a lot of admiration and, and, and respect for this football team. They never did give up. Even when we came back with six minutes, we scored, did what we had to. And uh, Tony Ezel, again, uh, was the master mind behind all this. He threw some great passes. And... Uh, 
Uh, this is, a, I think, the touchdown was a fourth down play. So that shows your poise right there. But again, we just made too many mistakes. We had opportunity to score and, and uh, we just didn't get in the end zone. Here this is, this is a touchdown. fourth down play right here for yeah. a touchdown. Tim Daniel got his man beat. Tony stepped up in the pocket and found him, put it right on the money. And so well, the Rattlers take the lead. The coach decides, wait, let's go for the two point conversion because that way it forces Grambling to have to score exactly. to win this football game. We had to take a timeout, but we, I, I thought about it on the sideline. I thought uh, the two points would make them, you know, three points, so they had to go for a touchdown, touchdown to, to win. win. Right, so exactly. it, it uh, worked out well, All except right. that they came back <laughs> and drove down the field on it. Well, Grambling is going to come back with a drive of their own, and uh, here's a pass to the tailback butcher, and here's the big fullback again. That's uh, Eric Gant. Yeah, and you see our secondary coming up having to make a tackle here. Uh, phase man, this yeah. penalty hurt us. That was a, really the turning point in this ball game yeah. because that gave them 15 yards. It wasn't intentionally, but it was a flagrant foul, and that was 15 yards. And they got another 10 yards here. Yeah. Gave them a first down first and kept down. the drive alive. And the Tigers now will go in for the score. There's a butcher in for the touchdown. And certainly, Coach, that face mask kept this drive alive because we, the Rattler defense really had come back and done a fine job. Well, we blocked, Block here. Blocked it here. And I guess the, even at the start of that drive, we got a poor uh, uh, kickoff on there. They got good field position, and then it started from there. We had two minutes, six seconds left. Uh, we moved the ball down, Keith, and uh, uh, got first down here. First down, big tight end, Greg Wynn. Greg Wynn. Here we go. This is Alonzo Ashwood, and that one was ruled incomplete. And Coach, this is the fourth down play, and uh, now this go one, for Keith, it. This is against Terry Mickens, who would normally catch this ball that was right there. Uh, that would have put us in the field goal range, continue to drive. It could have been. We could have gone for the first down, Keith, but uh, it just wasn't meant for us uh, on this particular Saturday. Yeah, Terry would usually catch those, popped them in his hands, but he couldn't hold on. Here's the final stats, and Coach, I know you don't like this, but when you look at the stats, and we go 417 total offense to Grambling's 330, and boy, we had a fine day running the football against the Tigers, too, 220 yards. We outgained, we did more running this time than we did in the passing department, but uh, as you said, it just was not to be on this Saturday. Well, one thing that was pleasing, Keith, I think the game was officiated very, very well. Uh, we only had two penalties, so uh, they had 10, <laughs> which I thought that would be just the opposite. So we can't complain about the officiating. Any, anybody we can blame has to be ourselves. Yeah. Split crew that officiated this game right. of MEAC and SWAC officials, and it was a great game. Coach Robinson said he was very happy to renew this rivalry, too, between Florida A&M and Grambling. Yes, they will be here next year, so it is a great rivalry, and uh, we're glad that this, uh, this game is now continued, and uh, we hope that uh, it will be around for a while. All right, Coach, three more years on that contract with Grambling, and certainly Rattler fans will get a chance to see Eddie Robinson and the Grambling Tigers in Tallahassee next year. All right, when we come back, we'll take a look at our upcoming opponent and the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference scoreboard after this timeout on the Ken Riley Show. <laughs> Budweiser presents the 12th annual Florida Classic Football Weekend. Witness the Rattlers of Florida A&M University as they clash with the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman College. Saturday, November 30th, 1.30 p.m. at Tampa Stadium. Yeah, it's a day game. So don't miss the festivities and the pageantry of the 12th annual Florida Classic Football Weekend. Order your tickets now from Ticketmaster Outlet statewide. It's the Florida Classic, Tampa's Thanksgiving tradition. Let's play a guessing game. Which brands did Consumer Reports rate the best? General Electric, Maytag, or Whirlpool? Isuzu Rodeo or Jeep Cherokee? Zenith, Sony, or RCA? Guessing games are fun, but when you really need to know the brands to buy, you don't want to play games. You want facts. And that's what you'll get when you call for your free trial issue of Consumer Reports. 
Every month, Consumer Reports tests and rates products by brand name. Gives you all the pros and cons, including the price we paid. Call for your free trial issue now. If you like it, you'll get 11 more issues, including our famous auto issue and the 1992 buying guide issue, all for just $20. Or write cancel on the bill and owe nothing. You'll also get our current 1991 buying guide issue and the new medicine show absolutely free. So join the more than 5 million Consumer Reports subscribers who never play guessing games when they shop. Call for your free trial issue now. Call 1-800-624-4400. All right, the Rattlers go 5-5 five and five now on the season, Coach, and we get set for the big one, the Florida Classic down in Tampa against the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman, who uh, improved to 5-4 and four this past weekend by beating uh, the Wolverines of Morris Brown College down in Nassau, the Bahamas. Final score in that one, 51-13. to 13. The Wildcats had a big day, and certainly anticipation is great for the big Florida Classic, and Coach, certainly the Wildcats are a much improved football team, and this is going to be a big game. Much improved football team. They're 4-1 in the conference. North Carolina A&T and South Carolina State will play uh, this coming weekend, and uh, whatever happens in that game could decide uh, the conference champ. Uh, if A&T win, they'll be 5-1. Uh, uh, Bethune Cookman still be 4-1 with us to play, so it's a big ball game, and I'm sure that uh, they have everything to, to, to gain, and uh, I mean, yeah, everything to gain, and if they mess around and lose, then that could really be the end. So uh, we know it's a big ball game, and it should be an exciting football game, and we look forward to it. All right, Coach. Tickets on sale for that one all over the state, and it seems like it's going to be a big crowd, maybe better than 50,000 on hand. Let's look at the MEAC scoreboard. Morgan State, Coach, gets a big win over Howard, 37 to 28, first win of the season for the Golden Bears. Well, uh, Coach Diggs said he was going to beat somebody in the conference, and unfortunately it was Howard. And right now, Howard is uh, really struggling. They're 2 and, uh, I think, 2 and 8 yeah. on the season right now, and they haven't won a game since they beat us, which is, uh, boy, I tell you, that's something. <laughs> but, uh, you know, early in the year, they were picked real high to do some things, but uh, right now they are struggling. All right, Delaware State defeats uh, Northeastern. South Carolina State falls to Jackson State, and A&T was idle last week, but they get ready for South Carolina State in a big ball game coming up this week. The MEAC standings, you see A&T and Bethune-Cookman still in a fight for the conference crown, which could be decided in the A&T South Carolina State game this weekend. Uh, Delaware State still in the hunt, and South Carolina State, surprisingly enough, still in the hunt as well. Coach, let's talk about uh, the open week that we have now to get ready for Bethune-Cookman, and what about uh, what, the, what will the Rattlers be doing to get set for the Wildcats? Well, Keith, we, first of all, we got uh, Tim Green was hurt, so we're hoping that that week will help him. I don't know the severity of his injury right now. We know it's a knee. And uh, Tim is a tough young man, but uh, when he goes down, uh, you know, he, uh, he, he is hurt. So we're hoping that uh, we'll get a good week of practice because next week is a uh, Thanksgiving weekend and a lot of our freshmen are probably going home early. So this week is very, very important for us in preparing for the following weekend. Now you're a little concerned about William Carroll, who's shaking up in the Grambling game, certainly because Bethune has a great passing attack and the top three receivers in the conference are on Bethune's team. It's going to be a great test for our young cornerbacks. Uh, we'll see just how uh, capable they are of getting the job done. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. They throw the ball a lot. Uh, we're going to have to come up with a good defensive scheme, and uh, we'll work on that and uh, see what can happen. And the pass rush is going to be, a, be very paramount in this football game, and also coverage. If we can match up with our, their receivers outside, there are some things we probably can do. But uh, they have excellent passing uh, attack and always have, but we've always been able to throw the football. Jermaine Hall from Jacksonville is doing an outstanding job, and we have a fair passing game, too, so they're going to have to prepare for us. So it should be an exciting arrow attack uh, Saturday uh, on November 30th. Certainly it's a big game for the Wildcats, a big game for the Rattlers, too, because if the Rattlers win, we'll finish up with a winning season. So it's a very important game. Rattler fans, uh, if you haven't bought your tickets for the Florida Classic, don't hesitate. The tickets are moving fast. They're expecting an excess of 50,000 people in Tampa Stadium on a Thanksgiving weekend. So get ready for the Florida Classic. And, of course, we'll be back next week to get you ready for the big game here on the Ken Riley Show.